Hey guys, I'm Kyle Taylor and I am back with another episode of the Richmond Real Estate Show. Today is September 20th and today we're going to be talking about how to negotiate a real estate deal. All right, so in most real estate contracts, uh, there's usually two or three negotiations that go on. Uh, first is the sales price, closing costs that we negotiate. Uh, number two is the home inspection items that pop up during the home inspection as the items that uh, are going to get repaired. And then three, uh, sometimes we'll have an appraisal issue uh, that we run into that would be a third negotiation. Uh, those are the major main three negotiations that go on in a real estate contract. All right, so what I'm going to talk about today is no negotiation is equal. There's always outside factors uh, that control who's going to get a better deal. So what I mean by that, and I'll show you this graphic above, uh, there's usually uh, pressure on the buyer and there's also pressure on the seller side in any uh, contract negotiation. So on the buyer side, uh, they have what's called motivation. They also have what's called um, negotiation power. So uh, what I mean by that is the buyer or whoever's buying the property, they may have a lease that's coming up. Uh, they also have interest rates that are increasing right now. Um, and then also depending on the type of financing, uh, if they're cash, they have stronger negotiation power as opposed if they're getting some type of financing, then um, they're not as strong as a, a cash buyer per se. Um, but also depending on their motivation will determine um, the amount of uh, power that they have in negotiating the deal. And on the seller side, they've also got negotiation power and motivation as well. So uh, a lot of the times the days on market dictates the negotiation power for the seller. The earlier they are on the market, uh, they usually have more negotiation power because they're earlier to the market as far as if they've been on the market for 30, 45, 60 days, their negotiation power uh, typically goes down. Um, because they're not seeing the offers. Their motivation, they'll also will have motivation on the seller side, uh, which is usually their carrying costs to keep the property, especially if they're moved out. Uh, they're still paying um, utilities, they're paying lights, cutting the grass, uh, maybe making a mortgage, especially if they already have another house. So that usually dictates their motivation um, in the deal. All right, so those are the principles of negotiating going into the deal, uh, which is um, while most clients will have an agent represent them because uh, agents know not to reveal this kind of stuff. Um, and when you're an agent, you don't talk directly to the other party. So the reason I bring this up, uh, you know, so sometimes we'll be in a transaction where you'll have a seller that's moved out of the home. They've already bought another home. Their days on market is very hot. So there's a seesaw that is occurring, uh, especially if you have a buyer that's flexible, that doesn't need to move at any point. And also they're a cash buyer. You have a seesaw of, you've got a seller that's in very high uh, motivation, low negotiation power. And then you've got a buyer that's low motivation and very high negotiation power. So there's always a seesaw that's occurring in real estate and that usually dictates as the who's going to end up getting a better deal. So that's what goes on behind the scenes in most real estate uh, transactions. Hope that helps. Hope that brings some clarity as to uh, how real estate deals are negotiated. Until next time, I'll catch you later. You stay classy, Richmond.